Hello everyone, and welcome back to Realism Overhaul Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.12, where I decided that I liked the look of the scramjet aerospike so much, I wanted to adapt it into a regular space plane without the scramjet. And so we have removed the scramjet, and we now have a smooth body that has to be this size because the rear RCS force is still here, and I didn't want to mess with that for now. And so this is the look of it. We only have two aerospikes instead of three, as we did before, partly because there is no need to continue the flow of the scramjet anymore. And also because I found out that when, remove, when we remove the scramjet, the center of mass does shift backwards a bit. And so we needed to remove one of the uh, aerospikes in order to keep the center of mass happy when we are out of fuel. So if we take a look and we diminish all the fuel, we can see that it's really, really close. We are carrying much less hydrogen now. We're carrying about the same load of oxygen, actually a little bit less oxygen as well. And so this is the basically the mixture for the aerospikes with a little bit extra hydrogen, just in case we decide to use the jets on the way down. And so we have dumped something on the order of 70 tons of hydrogen because we're not using the scramjet and we're not planning to take off with this right now. We'll get to that later. Uh, right now, we are going to use a separate stage to boost us up, and then we will light the aerospikes and get to orbit. And so we can be just 222 tons. Actually, that's still pretty heavy for the boost stage that I'm planning on, and we'll have to work that out. This is a test. I don't know how it's going to work out. This is still not a cargo vessel, right? This is a passenger vessel. Now, if we remove the hydrogen, we don't need so much space for the fuel like we did before. Uh, we used to have like a million liters, 1.15 million liters of hydrogen. Now we only have 360,000. So it's possible that we could use that extra space as a cargo area. And that's one of the benefits of converting it and not doing the airspike and not having to take off from a runway with the jets and ramjet anymore. Um, I wish we could remove the jet ramjets, but their mass is sort of integrated into the whole system anyway. So. Uh, as a separate part, I didn't make these parts very heavy. I probably should have rebalanced that a little bit. But dry mass for reference right now is uh, 64.7 tons. So it's not light, but it's also not small. It's about shuttle sized anyway. So we probably can't argue that it should be lighter than this. And so given that, we are going to proceed with uh, putting it on the back of the Orion carrier plane. Now you might have noticed that since this is not a scramjet aerospike anymore, I've just gone with its given name, which was Asuka. That is a reference to multiple things. If you want to go with the Evangelion reference, that's fine. I thought of that. Uh, so yes, we have the... Though I guess then the Orion carrier plane should be called Misato or something. But uh, yeah, we have it on the Orion carrier plane. You can see how big the, the Asuka space plane is. It's actually quite large, and that yields quite a lot of problems. Uh, for one thing, should we just ignite the aerospikes? Thankfully, the Orion carrier plane's vertical stabilizers already splayed out, <laughs> otherwise they get torched. But yeah, should we ignite the aerospikes on the ground? That's a question. Uh, we could add more fuel. There's plenty of extra volume in the Aska side, in the Aska space plane. Well, our mount isn't really ideal for this. It was meant for the upper stages for the Orion carrier plane. It's not shaped for this purpose. I'll have to come up with a new mount for it. And right now I'm planning on just igniting the Rex engines at, at the ground and seeing if it can maintain its balance. But it might not be able to maintain its balance and we might need to light the air spikes, in which case we need to use more of the volume from the space plane. And yeah, it's uh, going to be interesting. This is a very heavy load for the Orion carrier plane. And I don't know if it's going to be good performance or not. Uh, let's just test it and find out. Okay, here we are launching from our spaceport at Tampico because we would like to land the Orion carrier plane at the Bahamas. We might want to fit the Orion carrier plane with jet engines like these. I like the nozzle in particular that I made there. But yeah, let us throttle up, SAS on, ignition, and launch. And it's amazingly holding itself really well. 
It's not even using pitch. It is quite amazing, actually, when you think about it. Uh, there's no reaction wheel here or anything. So this is pretty darn good. Uh, well, we are sort of tilting the wrong way a little bit. Let's try and get... I forget what heading it is to the Bahamas, though. Uh, no, I didn't want you to roll. Okay. The Orion carrier plane is just a uh, monster, really. This is a uh, heavier load than it's supposed to carry. Uh, normally, I only have it do 160 tons. This is 222. So it's probably not going to be able to get to the Bahamas like this. And we probably need to light the air spikes. Possibly mid-air. There's so many different variations of how we can do this. And that's part of the problem. Um, we might want to just light them mid-air, I think. By testing, we know that the Orion carrier plane should go at an orbital velocity of 4,000 meters per second if it intends to reach uh, the Bahamas. But I think it's going to fall short, taking a look at the sum of our numbers. Oh, so the pitch is going to be interesting eventually, but we can turn off some of the engines on the carrier plane, which I will do now. Oh, I set those to ignite. Well, I guess that's convenient. Okay. Uh, now, I, I had the aerospace action group to eight for the scramjet aerospace missions, so they happen to light right there. I guess maybe that's the right time to light them. We may want to shift the space plane further back just so that it's not torching the body like this. Though it does have the body flap there too. Now, let's be careful about this. Okay, that's 4,000 separation. I don't feel like we separated properly. Well, it does say carry amount for Star Stage 2. This is not Star Stage 2. Hmm. Well, that's not good. Alright, so I've added an extra node in the hope that it can decouple properly, but there's no guarantees. We'll try this again. Throttle up. SAS on. Uh, we were initially tilted a little bit off, and that's because the space plane is tilting down a bit. And we're controlling from the space plane, I believe. So, yeah, I'll just keep that in mind. We were actually going fine initially before. And ignition. And launch. Well, okay. I was not expecting that. I didn't think I had the destructible facilities or anything. Um, yeah, that's that's totally unexpected. The launch pad is was created by me. <laughs> we don't have destructible facilities in this. I, okay. Kerbal remains interesting. Um, that's never happened before. I've launched many things from this Tampico launch site, and not once have we had that issue. I mean, mostly I've launched the Orion carrier plane from here during the testing to see whether it could land in the Bahamas, but... And, of course, we've done uh, city testing. You can sort of see the city over there, but uh, for some reason the terrain isn't rendering properly. The ground is clipping above it. Maybe our explosion pushed the ground down or something, I don't know. Okay, eight and rolling. And shut down. All right. This space plane seems to be reading its own delta V right now. And 300 meters per second of it. Separation. All right. We are separated. And ignition. We actually don't need full throttle. But it'd be interesting if we could do this, get to orbit, and then jump back to the Orion carrier plane, right? I wonder if we can get to orbit in time with this, given that we're pushing it a little bit as far as g-forces. We'll limit it to about 4 g's here. I 
Okay, that's Orbit, 236 by 190. And I want to see if we can get back to the Orion carrier plane. I might have wanted to revert though, considering we just destroyed everything at Tampico. We are on our way down. Let's see if we have time to orient. It's not the quickest thing to turn itself. We have no jet engines fitted in this case, so we either hit it or we don't. 40 degrees is for the shuttle, 30 degrees is for the Orion carrier plane coming down from suborbital trajectory. I think I picked the wrong heading though. We're supposed to end up south of the tip of Florida. Probably 80 degrees was better. I thought it was. Well, no, this path is looking like we're heading south. I guess it's just the camera angle. So we're heading like this. We might want 78. I think it was 78 degrees that goes straight into the Bahama runway. Uh, we're not rolling quickly enough. <laughs> uh, please. It's not rolling. Why, why are you not rolling? Oh, control from here. I bet. Yeah. Um, oh, it doesn't seem to be helping. Okay, it's all roll messed up. Uh, yeah, this is going to go bad really quickly. Yeah, I don't know why its intrinsic roll orientation was not right, but it was clearly 90 degrees off, I think. Uh, yeah, that's... <laughs> Either we are oriented properly or we're not oriented properly. It's not going to survive like that. It was looking okay. But... Yeah. Well, let's see if the modified Asuka space plane is going to be able to come back down. I think that's the next thing we'll test. Our inclination, because we launched out of Tampico, is not very high. We can't actually get back to Cape Canaveral with this inclination. We'll have to land at Tampico. Or the Bahamas, of course, but probably Tampico. So I need to figure out what our re-entry location ought to be. But our aerodynamics compared to the regular scramjet aerospike is, will be completely different. It's got basically the same surface area, but it's lighter now. So we would expect it to slow down faster, and our re-entry location will be closer to our destination than it otherwise would have been with the scramjet aerospike. First of all, let's boost up to uh, standard orbit. I don't remember the coordinates of, well, we're north of Tampico now. That's not great, but I don't remember the Tampico coordinates off the top of my head, so I'm gonna pick target on map. Um, it's about 17 degrees ahead of Cape Canaveral. Again, we do have extra liquid hydrogen to run the jet engines, so that's something. Our orbit is a little bit lopsided, but I want to come down after one orbit, so we're going to take it. We have to use two aerospikes if we're going to use the aerospikes at all, because now one would be imbalanced in theory. I don't know if the gimbling would be enough to keep it steady. I doubt it, because uh, the center of mass is too far back. We'll aim for... 30 kilometers. So 300 by 30. In picking 117 degrees east, I'm betting that it's going to get more drag and slow down faster than the scramjet aerospike. Otherwise, I would have picked something like 110. So, will we end up at Tampico or will we overshoot and end up in Havana? Or somewhere in between? Let us find out. Well, I've taken pains to make sure that the balance is the same as before, and so far so good. Well, we are approaching Baja California now, but still going very fast. I'm going to try and pitch up more. We've got a lot of room here. We might end up in Havana like this. Can I go to 50 degrees? Yeah, I'm thinking we're going to overshoot since we're still at 6,400 meters per second. 
Maybe I should pitch down and just go for Havana. Or the Bahamas again. Got a long orbit. Seems like we could make it all the way out there. The problem is turning, but then again, we've got the liquid hydrogen. So we are not going to land at Tampico. <laughs> I don't know what state Tampico is in. I'm worried about that. The next test is going to be whether this can act basically like Skylon. In other words, just use the jet ramjets to get up to Mach 5 and then ignite the aero spikes as if using them in Skylon's rocket mode and get to orbit. And then the question will be whether the scramjet had any benefit at all or whether it would just be better to use the aero spikes past Mach 5. So I think that's a worthy test, you know. Is it a good idea to carry the extra scramjet weight? We haven't really explored that. Or should we just do it like Skylon? Skylon can carry cargo after all. We're just carrying crew. Now, a crew cabin is heavy, but um, probably not more than 20 tons extra so, because that's the payload mass of Skylon. So, by the way, we're heavier than Skylon would be even though we're carrying the same engine equipment, right? We've got jet ramjets plus rocket engines. Uh, of course, in Skylon, they're combined, but we're carrying the same basic capability and using hydrogen and oxygen as well, but we're 14 tons extra because I wanted to make sure that this being a novel design, we have margin and I'm trying to be convincing about it. So basically, you can think of the crew cabin as being 14 tons. So will our hydrogen be enough to get us over to the Bahamas? At least something should land in the Bahamas in this video. Yeah, we're quite a bit south from the Bahamas. We're going to have to care, uh, cover quite a long distance. We can see the main island there. But I'm not at a point where I can take control right now. So we obviously should have retro burned much earlier. And it didn't get as much extra drag as I thought it would. We could also reduce the periapsis. I think I'll pitch down now. So pitch down, and then taking control via atmospheric autopilot, and trying to turn carefully. Uh, well, I sort of see the Bahamas, I think, still. Or the island. Uh, we're a ways off. Okay, well, let me see. I don't know which flight regime would be most efficient for the jet engines, but we're going to try and ignite them now. We're a lot lighter than I usually am when I light the jets. So they're very powerful. Uh, I have to throttle down in order to avoid going too fast with them. But yeah, as a result, we don't see the plumes, which is interesting. But we don't have much time with them, even with the liquid hydrogen that we've got. It's maybe a few minutes, six. I'd say six minutes. RCS off, dumping the oxygen. Uh, we don't have much liquid and hydrogen. I think I better glide. We'll save what fuel we have for... Just in case I need to do something special. The terrain should render now. Oh, maybe we're not as far along as I thought I was. Oh gosh, it's uh, it's losing speed a lot faster than I'd like. Let me close the air intakes. That's still a thing. Oh, that's the wrong one. Ah, oh, there we go. The air intakes were still open. Oh, I forgot the body flaps. I replaced this part so that we could get the node. But I forgot to reattach the body flaps. We don't even have body flaps. Shoot. Well, not 
quite as reliable a test as I would have liked, but the body flaps don't do a whole lot, to be honest. Oh, there is the terrain. I really only made the very northern part of the island. It's a fairly big island. And it's a special use case. I feel like I could do with a little bit more speed, so opening intakes. Slight the engines a little bit. Let's see, landing didn't work out great last time. And we'll open the intakes again for slowing down. Gear down. A little bit fast for gear. I have no idea why it makes the engine sound when I lower the landing gear, but whatever. Last time I laid off the brakes, this time I'm definitely going to use the brakes. I usually lay off the brakes because I'm worried that they'll make us skid, but last time we skidded off the runway anyway. Okay, intake open. Intake closed. Intake open. Intake closed. I'll close the intake on a while landing instead of trying to use it as an air brake at the ground can't see anything now oh we're, uh, don't fall short now at least we can't hurt the body flap okay brakes oh oh it hopped okay yeah using brakes is better also, but this was a different configuration. It doesn't have the big scramjet at the bottom. It's lighter. But we made it. Well, we made it to the Bahamas. I was supposed to land at Tampico, but at least we brought it back. So anyway, successful mission, except the Ryan Carrier plane control thingy didn't quite work out. I'll have to figure out about that. Uh, but there are many other variations. Like I said, we could try to skylon this, or we could also light the aero spikes at the ground and increase the fuel load and see whether that's a good idea or not. If we increase the fuel load like that, it decreases the potential cargo bay. Though, do we really want to build a cargo bay into this and increase its dry mass? That's a tough question. But if we increase the fuel load, then when we refuel it in orbit, it could get places. It has uh, enough food, water, and oxygen for 14 days. So potentially what we could do is we could send it out to the moon uh, drop people off around the moon and come back kind of thing if we had enough Delta V. So they could basically do the Shinkansen sort of thing. Um, yeah, well, there are a lot of possibilities here. But for now, uh, this particular test, I didn't expect the Orion carrier plane to be so well balanced with it. And it turns out it worked pretty well overall. And I am pleased with that. So with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.